We're going to start at that word there. We're not going to start at this word. Are you sure? Good girl. We're going to start at that word, the first word. Quack. Said the Billy Goat. Camellia is exactly the kind of special needs pupil which a new system of measuring attainment called P-Scales is designed to benefit. Hobble, gobble, said the dog. The dogs really say that. Hobble, gobble, said the dog. Wow. She's currently working below National Curriculum Level 1, and without P-Scales, her attainment levels would have a familiar and rather depressing ring. There's nothing more disheartening than seeing a child who, in terms of a, an end-of-year assessment, doesn't seem to be making any progress. That if you look, they're, they're W in year one, they're W in year two, they're still W in year four. It's disheartening for the teachers because they've been working their socks off and they know that the children are making progress. It's disheartening for parents because they've sat in review meetings and teachers have said, oh, we're really, really pleased, you know, with the progress of this child. He's worked really hard and made stacks of progress, but still W. So I think it's good for everybody that they can see that there's actual, actual movement that a child is making progress. P-scales have been in use in special schools for several years. From summer of 2007, the system's likely to become mandatory in all mainstream schools. At Kingston Park Primary in Newcastle, the head decided to bring in P-scales early. The children who have special needs have IEPs and they have targets within their IEPs. So staff are quite used to measuring in small steps what children can do. And I think, although it is extra work for staff, the staff at this school know that in terms of special needs, the Senko's going to support them in anything that they do. Floppy is so sad, he's dropped his ball. Senko, Suzanne Gould, is taking the lead in implementing the system, which provides a way of accurately tracking even small signs of improvement in the learning of pupils like Camellia. You're not sure? You, want to, you think he wants to draw? Yeah. Oh. The catalyst behind it was really, you know, I went to a, a special needs conference that was organised by the local authority where um, P-scales were discussed and the importance of using P-scales with children who, who are below level one. And we also at that time had children in the school working within that level. And it just was a really appropriate thing to start to use with support staff and some key members of staff. Bah, said the cow. Why are you laughing? What's funny? Do you think they're making the wrong noises? Is that why you're laughing? Do you know? I think you do. P scales go from P1 to P8 and the early P scales, P1, 2 and 3, are subdivided into even smaller steps. The majority of the children in our school are not working below sort of a P4, P5 level. So, you know, we haven't had as much to do with the lower part of the P scales because that's children do tend to be in a more specialist provision. But I think it's just really important that when you're forming judgments about P-Scales that you involve all of the people that are working with that child. So involving the support staff and myself, the class teachers and a, a whole team approach in looking at what the child's done over a long period of time to make that judgment and assessment is really useful. Um, and a child can have elements across three or four different P-Scales but you just have to decide what's the best fit like you do with other national curriculum levels. Parents as well as teaching staff get a chance to be involved in review meetings which help determine a pupil's P-scale score. The ones that we've used the P-scales with, they have been pleased because they can see that their child is making progress. I think she's settling well into year two now that she's getting to know the routines and she's generally sort of very happy and very sociable and she's a very popular member of the class, she's very friendly. At the end of a review meeting we're looking at you know, how the child's doing and what the next steps are going to be. So I think, yes, parents do feel quite positive about P-scales. So it looks as if she still thinks she needs to get a bit better at getting dressed. 
and she would like to be better at art. I think parents are just pleased that progress is being tracked and that, that they can see where children have come from and come to. We have got a booklet for parents and carers about what P-scales are, why we use them, the benefits of using them that we, we share with them. Although Kingston Park Primary has a higher level of special needs pupils than the national average, only a handful of these are monitored using P-scales. We only use P-scales with children who have quite a high level of special need. That the P-scales are a summative assessment, so we'd only use them once a year, possibly twice a year, to see what level the children are at. Um, most of the children with special needs are actually working within level one. We've got P-scales for just the core subjects, um, and just like with, with, with all children, children with special educational needs can exceed in some areas and find other areas more challenging. So a child might be working within P-scales for number, but might be working within level one or level two for their shape, space and measures. Ink that we put in pens to make the pens right. They need some ink. I, I, ink. Where does that need to go? All children exceed and have difficulties in different areas. With P-scales there isn't a P6 child with elements across the board. You're so clever! Come back to me! In Year 2 there are four pupils assessed on P-scales, including Camellia. How does her class teacher find the system? So the first time I came across the P-scales was really when Camellia came into my class um, and I didn't really know about them or how to use them and the training really it's just come through the special education needs coordinator and we sort of met a few times and looked at the different levels and we've talked about sort of what you might see as evidence for those different levels and we've watched a dvd together as the team and where well, we've seen different examples from you know of other children sort of doing things activities in in lessons with their teachers and things just to see what they might say or what work they might produce and what that level shows so. What does this word say? L. And. And, good girl. Can you do that, show me? Can you do that, Camellia? You're very good at your action words, aren't you, Camellia? Show me. Good girl. Camellia does access additional um, support because of her physical difficulties. Um, so she has sometimes an, an additional adult working with her and her group. We're trying to work with Camellia on developing her independent learning skills. That's a, a really key objective for us, so that although she will need additional support, that there are times when she can work and, and produce meaningful bits of work by herself through the use of ICT, um, through altering things very slightly, which to help her access things. You need to provide sort of teaching and learning for all the children in your class and for children who are working below level one you do need to sort of provide activities for them to learn and the peace scales are just really useful so you can see what progress has been made and you can help you think about ways forward for that child. I mean it's not a highlighting sheet and it's not a tick list of things they can do, it's a summative assessment we we'll do once a year, usually at the end of the year but we've done it this time of year because she's fairly new to the school. Using her P-scale score and her IEP, teachers, support staff and the SENCO can develop a greater understanding of Camellia's specific needs. I was working on her name. Um, she's unsure of, of how many letters are in her name and, and which letters are in her name. So I wanted to work, and it's really important that Camellia learns to type her name independently. What's the next sound, Camellia? Can you remember? It's a, now where's a, it's somewhere along here, can you see it? Ah. Oh, lovely, what's the next sound in your name? Camellia does find it quite difficult to concentrate for long periods of time, so you have to break things down to very small little activities that change a lot, that include moving around and that change to keep her motivated and, and keep the concentration there. I think this is a funny book. Yeah. So does it make you happy or sad? Point me to the face that it makes you feel happy. It makes me feel happy as well, because it is funny, isn't it? I think it's really important that learning support assistants are trained in all elements of special educational needs. 
learning support assistants in our schools sometimes follow children year on year so their knowledge of that child is extensive and it's something that you know we, we they must be included and um, their knowledge of the child and the evidence that they they have you know of that child is 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 hugely beneficial when you're talking about p scales to reach an accurate p scale score the senko will often get the opinion of all those working with a pupil like camelia today they're looking at her reading skills and I think that's improved as well, because she was quite enthusiastic reading with me this morning and I haven't had that before. Camelia is quite new to our school. She'd been, she's been with us for about two terms now and we felt that we needed to just get together to just give a summative assessment of where we felt she was working and I thought it would be really beneficial for us all to come together and just share our knowledge of Camellia and we focused in on reading yesterday. Looking at the evidence, we felt she was the best fit around a P7. And I just think it's so important when you're looking at P-scales that you do involve all of the members of staff that are working with that child because children present differently to different people in different contexts. So, and hopefully through discussing you know, the P-scales, we're naturally thinking of ways that we can move her forward in her learning as well. Her concentration is improving mm -hmm. as well, and that's helping her to remember sort yeah. of all the different words. That's been an issue, hasn't um, it? Your concentration, keeping her on yeah. task for that, that specific time. time that you're, yeah. you're working is yeah. a bit of an issue, so yeah, I think it's an improvement. Children with special educational needs, their achievements need to be recognised and celebrated. Yeah. They might not be in line with national expectations, but the P scales provide that measure that you can say, well, we've moved from a P5 to a P6, and as a teacher, I think that's really rewarding. Practitioners say it's important not to see P-scales as a replacement for the IEP. I think the thing about P-scales is that you're only using them probably once a year as a summative assessment. It's not an assessment for learning. We've got IEP targets for that. And I think the difficulty is when people try to confuse the two things and think that that P-scales are like IEP targets and you've got to use it as a teaching tool. You haven't, it's just to show where children are at. I think it would be really beneficial if you're just starting with P-scales to, um, to break it down to something that's really manageable like we do with special educational needs. Generally we, we break things down into little steps. So take one aspect, take English or take reading or take the specific area that that child is struggling in and really home in on that initially and then build on that. Now we need to try and find the other go. Pull one over. Is that go? No, have another turn. Oh, let's look at them. Let's say the word. Go. Go. And point. Go. Go. Getting an up and running with one child before you try to do it with everybody. And think carefully about the child that you're starting it with so that you start something that's not going to be too challenging and too difficult. Be and open and honest with parents and say, you know, this is a new thing for us. It's a new thing nationally. We're trying it with your child and this is what we're doing. So that um, it's not a big mystical thing. You know, it's just something that you've, you've got to work at and try and find the best way for yourself.